Hello, my name is Gil Zilka. Welcome to my channel. This is my series entitled Essential Classical Music, where we look at the best recordings of the major classical music works. Uh, this video is uh, taken out of my larger video covering the major symphonies. Uh, if you enjoy this, I hope you will go over and, and look at that larger one. Uh, just know that you don't have to watch it all in one big gulp. Uh, it is divided into chapters. It's real easy to just click uh, through and choose whichever symphony that you're curious about. So I hope you enjoy it. Now let's talk about symphony number seven. Uh, has that, uh, to me, what always you know stood out to me first was that uh, Allegretto, uh, bum, 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 that second movement. It's, it's one of the ones that uh, even people who don't know classical music very well uh, will be able to identify that. But the rest of the symphony is, is more uh, dance-like. Uh, it's very rhythmic, uh, very exciting. And uh, my top choice for this symphony is Leonard Bernstein, Vienna Philharmonic, 1979. This comes from his complete cycle. I alluded to that earlier when I talked about the fifth symphony in that cycle being a little weak. The rest of the cycle is excellent. It's, it's actually ironically similar to Carl Bim uh, with the Vienna Philharmonic. And they're both with the Vienna Philharmonic, incidentally, on Deutsche Gramophone. Uh, both of them, uh, have a sort of a, a weaker fifth, but the rest of the cycle is excellent. So Bernstein is another one where I would recommend if you are looking for complete cycles and you want sort of a modern traditional interpretation, uh, Bernstein is, a, is an excellent choice. Uh, in in this recording, um, his gifts for uh, for uh, rhythm really are on display in this. Uh, he combines that with also uh, power and um, the beauty of the Vienna, Vienna Philharmonic. And for my money, this is, this is really uh, an, an excellent all-around choice. Uh, also, we were just talking about Carl Bim. Uh, his Seventh Symphony is also one of my top choices. Uh, it, it is, he's, he's a little bit more steady in his tempos, um, but it's a really beautiful recording and very natural. That's, that's the thing about Bim is, is everything he did just sounded very natural, not very you know, like someone imposing his will. And, and, and this is just a, a gorgeous recording, particularly if you like that second movement, uh, Allegretto. Now, he could be a little bit stately in his tempos, and so that, that final movement may, may, not be, may not have the wild abandon and energy that a lot of people like. Uh, you, will, you cannot say that about, uh, that about Carlos Kleiber. Uh, uh, this may be the most famous interpretation of the Seventh Symphony. This is uh, the one from 1976 with the Vienna Philharmonic that's coupled with his famous Fifth Symphony. And it shares many of the same qualities. Uh, it's very incisive, very dramatic. Uh, the Allegretto moves a little bit more, if, if that's your cup of tea. Um, and then the finale, uh, he was always really great in the finale, but even more so, I would say, in this live recording from 1982 with the Bavarian State Orchestra, or the, uh, as you say in German, Bayerischen uh, Staatsorchester, uh, um, which is actually the way you'll you'll see it on the on the title there. Um, th this one is just really uh, electric uh, and on and on fire, uh, especially in that last movement. So that is Kleiber, uh, another version, stereo version, that if you like it quicker, especially in the Allegretto, is uh, Macaris again. And again, this is also coupled with the Fifth Symphony. Uh, and again, this comes from a complete cycle as well. I don't know if I had, had mentioned that earlier, but he did a complete cycle with the Royal from uh, the, uh, uh, sorry, the <laughs> our Royal Liverpool Philharmonic. Um, and again, Macaris, it tended to favor quicker tempos, uh, and it almost sounds like a period performance, even though it's a modern orchestra, uh, that Allegretto moves a little bit more. Um, and the, the, uh, the rest of the symphony, uh, it definitely, definitely benefits from McCarris's approach. Uh, now, a few historic recordings I wanna talk about. One is going back again, this again is a coupling with the fifth. This is Klemperer from 1955 in mono with his fifth symphony. 
And I will just repeat uh, the same things I've been saying about the, the previous uh, Klemper uh, performances, that it's, it's uh, more uh, disciplined uh, in terms of it's, it's not rushing forward at all, but there's this almost hip hypnotic, relentless quality to the way he moves forward that I, I just, uh, it, it, it keeps my attention throughout, even though it is not as, you know, uh, how to put it not as um, uh, uh, aggressive in the way the way he approaches it but it, it really does work uh, and the Frill Harmonia sounds beautiful even though it's a mono recording uh, also I want to recommend Fortwanger as well for this one and this is actually one of his better sounding recordings this is from 1953 it's a live recording it's coupled with an excellent eighth uh, and it's somewhat similar to the Klemper approach except there's more flexibility uh, in the way uh, Furtwanger did it, and uh, it really works wonderfully. Uh, the third movement has the, the tempo fluctuations, almost, you know, they kind of keep you on the edge of your seat, and the way he ends the finale with a, a slight quickening of the tempo to the very end, uh, that that really works well. Um, and uh, again, it's, it's a very good sounding recording for live recording uh, from 1953. I do want to mention, so this is Deutsche Grammophon. Um, there is another box set that I would say next to that Audi set is probably the best one for uh, Fort Wenger, and that is this. This is uh, Deutsche Grammophon and a few DECA recordings sprinkled in of Fort Wenger. This is both studio and live performances, and this is just a gold mine. Uh, I'm going to keep referring to this one later. Uh, a goldmine in terms of uh, Furt Wenger, his, his best stuff. So this one includes both that seventh and eighth that I just alluded to. All right, and then we have one more to talk about. I'm not going to leave this one out. Toscanini. This is his 1936 New York Philharmonic recording, a legendary performance. Um, it's, it's definitely a little bit more limited in sound. A little bit more crackly, a little, uh, you know, less fullness to it, uh, and it's not maybe quite what you would expect uh, based on his other performances. It's it's actually not, it's it's uh, it's actually a little bit more conventional in terms of its tempo. It's not that aggressive, uh, but it's it still has that that Toscanini discipline to it, that incisiveness, uh, uh, that excitement. Um, and uh, the finale, uh, especially in, in his hands, you know, you got to hear Toscanini do it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, uh, I hope you'll also take time to click the like and subscribe buttons. And with that, I want to wish you all a great day and happy listening.